Welcome to the bold analysis. Nyamaza. Welcome to the bold analysis. The former IBC chairperson Wafula Chebukate is engaged in a war of words against with Okuru Okot, who was a presidential candidate in the last election in 2017 and 2022. And what is at the center of that uh, exchange is what I want us to look at. Wafula Chebukate did a tweet and rather on this Thursday even morning showing or rather supporting the words of the former US of, of the, not the former of the US ambassador Meg Whitman of the election was freest and fairest in, in his election in 2022 the freest and fairest and, and, and fairest and immediately he made this statement Kenyans on Twitter descended on Wafula Chibukate challenging him that he just needs to keep silent about the last election because as of who of, of the fairness and the freeness of that election it can only be judged by the electorates and one of the people that responded was Akuru Okot who insisted that the, um, the, the, the leaning or rather the incompetency of Wafula Chibukate really outplayed at the nomination process where candidates were left out. And Chibukati told a court that you did not meet the qualifications of vying for the presidency period. And then that is what has been causing that reaction. Now, if you ask me, as of the fairness of that election, Wafula Chibukati, I think, do not have the moral power, the moral authority to lecture the country. This is why in the last general election, Kenya experienced the lowest voter turnout and he will go down as the chairperson that actually killed our elections. In respect or the voter turnout in the last presidential election, in the last election, compared to the voter register does not show a positive trajectory about Kenyan's confidence on our election process. Remember, he was in charge of 2017 election and in charge of 2022 general election. Number two, one of the track records that uh, negative track records that Wafula Chibukati has, he's headed over a divided house both in 2022 and 2017. And I've been insisting that when you want to judge the last, when you want to judge Wafula Chibukati, don't narrow yourself to 2022 because it was his seven year tenure. He joined that house in 2016, that job in 2016, January, and just spearheaded three elections a general election, a rerun, presidential rerun, and again, general election. When you want to look at it generally and get an average, you will realize that Wachfula Chibukati headed a divided house. In the last election, uh, Akombe had to go and flee the country ahead of Rerirand. In that same last election, commissioners were split even after that election and they had to leave the commission. In the same general election 2017, election of election officials died it is not something that you cannot blame on by externally on him but of course it's a reality that, that happened during his reign lastly the other thing that me i also say where I, I i i also don't believe that he has that moral authority is because in the history of the kenyan elections for the first time our election was thrown out 2017 general election was thrown out by david maraga in full glare of a camera it is one of the things that was done. It was one of the elections that was beheaded by Chebukati. So those, uh, those three issues gives me a very, is what convinces me that Chebukati is the least to actually prefect, is the least prefect, is one of the worst prefect to tell this country about the fairness or the freeness of an election. And so one of the questions that is here is, 
this discussion about Meg Whitman was only hot. It had really dragged. It was a discussion in this country some days back. But again, people went silent about it. It's, it's not normally, it has not normally been raised. But why do you think Chebukati is raising it now? What exactly is the game plan? Now, the picture about election 2022 is something that William Ruda has been struggling, uh, trying to portray in public as if he doesn't want Kenyans to talk about it. Rather, he doesn't want it to emerge as a factor. But why would Chebukati then pick up that discussion now? Why should Chebukati remind us about the freeness and fairness of an election, despite the fact that the country at this moment was trying to look at ceasefire? Now, the talks are centered, uh, the Azimio side have floated uh, a server scrutiny or a server audit question. And of course, why do you think this matter is emerging now? There are three reasons. Chebukati is part, is endearing himself to the Western uh, powers, especially for a job. This word of fairness and freeness of that election was made publicly by Meg Whitman. And when Meg Whitman made that statement, it received a backlash. And of course, it was a backlash from the opposition and the other supporters of, uh, of Ray Lodinga uh, about how the Europe, or rather about why Meg was trying to tr stroll, or rather troll our elections. But then, we've seen Kenya Kwanzaa leaders coming out uh, to defend Mike Whitman, saying that she should not be targeted because according to them, election was free and fair. So we, we've seen the same statement of support of Meg coming from Kenya Kwanzaa. Then why do you think Chebukati will join it? Then Chebukati is joining that bandwagon to receive her fair share, or rather his fair share of recognition and support. I have always said, um, and, and someone gave this as, a, as just a trajectory. That someone told me, think about it. Huh? Um, we have been reading articles about the commercial interest of Meg Whitman as a person. Leave a lot the Meg as the ambassador. As a, as a person, she's a businesswoman. And we've been told about the businesses and what Meg is doing and how she has a sphere of influence within the country. And that, what that means here is that she's also she, she was in bombers of kenya when william Ruto was to be announced as the president and so there is something that you can very clearly that she also has an interest number two does the state want to erode public trust on the electoral process clearly voter turnout because what um what the azimula umoja have been doing by pushing Ruto's illegitimacy is to arouse the emotions of the country, or rather arouse the emotions of the support base, so that the support base will still have a trust that in our Zakana, you know, one of the reasons why someone goes to vote, especially the supporter of a political base of a polit or a politician, he or she will wake up and decide to go and vote for them to win. Apart from, you know, you want to put a political power. If you want, to put a, you want to put a political power, people normally wake up to go and win. No one goes to lose. So what is also seen here clearly here is, Chibukati about is just provoking people's emotions. You know, he's just there to, to provoke people. Like, people want to think, is this thing working? Is this thing right? Is this what is supposed to be done? So it is endearing himself or rather trying to erode the public trust. When he still continues to say election was free and fair, and I would And that's what exactly is his work. Number two, Ruto, bolster Ruto's legit legitimacy against revolt. I've been saying and been repeating here, Ruto is facing serious problem about the revolt. The revolt is within his camp in Kenya Kwanzaa, there is also a revolt from his own vet voting constituency and the voting constituency. The revolt has emerged because of non-fulfillment of the pledges, non-fulfillment of the promises that were made to the people. So what the president has been trying to do is to prove a point. And his point, what he wants, the point he struggles to prove is that I was right, I was legitimately elected. And that is why the likes of Chebukati have been brought into the fold. They have been brought to remind the country about uh, my win was free and fair, 
mere election was just is just being challenged because on malicious grounds but then what is also the intention is to show the country or rather to tell the country that you know Ruto is a legitimate president and is to cover revolt this revolt you've seen people that even voted for William Ruto in cameras uh, talking to when, when then the journalists are taking Vox Pop Vox Pop is the voice of populi, pop, of the population uh, the Olopoi saying we don't want Ruto we did not vote for him we were forced on him so what Chebukati needs to do is Chebukati is a rider you know he's someone there his voice is put there to remind us that you know what William Ruto is the president William Ruto is legitimately elected ladies and gentlemen that's my take but I do believe that uh, the likes of Chebukati should be off the limelight for some time by all fairness they should be off the limelight there is no need of responding there is no need of reminding us about the election we all know people will make their own judgment whether it was free or fair people will make their own judgment that's my take